Hey there guys, welcome to Dino's Vault once again. Today, as promised, I bring to you the Honda CBR 250R 2016 model review. The year was 2011 when the Ninja 250R was ruling the roost in the quarter liter bike segment around the world. And just when everyone thought who's going to take on the king and come out victorious, Honda emerged with the CBR 250R, which though could not overpower the Ninja, it did manage to outsmart the Ninja. The bike could come out victorious over the Ninja because it came across as an all-rounder. The bike offered adequate fun right from the lower RPMs. It offered a perfect blend of super sport and touring ergonomics. And it also offered rookie-friendly riding dynamics, thereby serving as a perfect learner's bike for those who were hoping to get started with the super sport culture. The CBR was launched first in Thailand in late 2010 and later introduced in India and other countries in 2011. Back at the time of its launch here in India, this was the only big bike that also offered ABS as an option, barring of course the RTR 180 which belonged to a lower segment. Over the years, the bike has been doing reasonably well and this new 2016 model was unveiled at the RevFest where Honda launched the CBR 650F. Sadly, we are just getting a paint scheme and decal upgrade for this 2016 model. Maybe Honda have some surprises in store for us down the line as we progress into this year, but for now, this is what we get. The bike itself is available in three colors, black, pearl white and sports red. Unfortunately, this is the only color that was available at the dealership, so I couldn't cover the other variants, but I believe the white color looks the best. Now, talking about its design, the CBR250R is based on the V4 concept model showcased at the Intermod show in 2008. The frontal design and the middle cowl styling is based on the VFR1200F. Even with the likes of RC390 now available with outright radical new age styling, the CBR250R looks decent enough. Overall fit and finish and build quality is very good and on par with what is expected from a Honda. The headlamp has its own signature appeal and looks decent enough. We do get pilot lamps and the windshield is well laid out to fend off any wind blast. The full fairing is neatly laid out. The design flows seamlessly all the way to the tail section. The side and rear panels are sharper and sleeker. The tail lamp is simply laid out and goes well with the rest of the design of the bike. The seats have adequate cushioning to offer great comfort for both the rider as well as the pillion. For all of us who keep complaining that Honda don't offer an engine kill switch, well this bike gets both the high beam flasher as well as the engine kill switch. Talking about the instrument cluster, we do get an analog tachometer. The digital display contains the speedometer, odometer, trip meter, fuel gauge, engine temperature gauge and a clock. Talking about the engine specs, now powering the CBR250R is a single cylinder liquid cooled four stroke fuel injected 250cc engine that puts out a maximum power of 26.5 ps at 8500 rpm and 22.9 Nm of torque at 7000 rpm. This comes mated to a six speed gearbox and the officially claimed max speed for this bike is 135 km per hour. Talking about my test ride experience, on paper the bike remains unchanged. The upgrade or update is just limited to the paint job and decal work. I had ridden this bike back in 2012 and I did like it back then. However, now the engine feels more refined and more responsive. The clutch operation is effortless. The gearbox is nice and smooth. The throttle response and pickup is good at lower RPMs and across the mid-range because of more torque being available lower down the rev band. The rider comfort and pillion comfort is best in class. Riding ergonomics are flexible in that you can tour on this bike and also have decent fun on the track at the same time. This versatile nature of the bike is what has worked in its favor and here in India, the bike suddenly starts making sense because the CBR is one of the most affordable quarter liter bikes that also comes well equipped with ABS. Add to this the bulletproof reliability that comes as standard with the Honda badging and I guess it holds up as a pretty decent proposition even to this day. Talking about the braking power available on board, we get 296mm disc up front and a 220mm disc at the rear. Braking is decent enough and it's really great to see Honda offer combined ABS as an option with this bike. The combined ABS system is a combination of Honda's patented combi brake system and ABS. The combi brake system ensures that braking pressure is equally applied on front and rear wheels even when only the rear brake is applied. The ABS system as we all know prevents wheel lockup even when full braking pressure is applied on wet surfaces. The ABS system is on by default and there is no switch to turn it off. Talking about the suspension setup, we get telescopic suspension up front and a spring-loaded hydraulic monoshock at the rear. The suspension is not too stiff nor too soft. It offers good comfort on the city streets and it should offer decent performance on the track as well. Talking about the wheels and tires, we get 17-inch wheels with tubeless tires. We get a 110 by 70 front tire and a 140 by 70 rear tire. The fatter rear tire offers good road grip which is always welcome. Ground clearance is 145 mm. Fuel tank capacity is 13 litres. 
talking about the mileage claim there's no official mileage claim as such but as per user feedback uh, at the dealership it's around 25 to 30 kmpl extracting good mileage always depends on the way we ride so i would suggest that you please go through my mileage tips link mentioned in the description portion below and price ex showroom hyderabad for the non abs variant is rupees 1,64,517 and whereas for the abs variant it is rupees 1,94,000 so that's pretty much it i just hope you found this video useful until next time this is dino saying ciao take care god bless and ride safe